On this week's episode of Ride the Lightning, the Tesla unofficial podcast, Tesla held its long-awaited Cybertruck delivery event, and I was lucky enough to be there. I'll recap all of the new information we learned about Tesla's stainless steel pickup truck, give you my impressions of the event, and so much more. What's happening, friends? I'm Ryan McCaffrey here with you for, if I may, an historic episode 435 of Ride the Lightning, the Tesla unofficial podcast, coming at you every single Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific since 2015. A landmark episode here because we've been waiting four years for this. The Cybertruck deliveries have begun. The truck is officially launched, and we're going to talk all about it. Uh, But first, a couple of little bits of housekeeping. First, this is the December 3rd, 2023 episode. Second, I hope all of you enjoy last week's special episode featuring that interview with Russell Shepard, the Michelin tire engineer. I, again, very much appreciate all of you listening to that, allowing me to step away for some family time over that Thanksgiving holiday. And really, yeah, the, that vacation timing could not have been any better because I came back home from one time zone and headed right to another one, almost just just a couple days later, out to Austin for the Cybertruck delivery event at Giga Texas. One more big thank you goes out to Tesla YouTuber Andy Sly. I've known Andy for a while now. Thank you to Andy for kindly offering me his plus one so that I could attend. Head on over, check out his channel when you get a chance. Andy Sly, S-L-Y-E. I'm pretty sure you're going to like what you see because he makes some great, great content. Uh, Real quick as well, I hope all of you kindly backing me at that ludicrous tier, that $10 per month tier or higher on my Patreon, which you can find at patreon.com slash Tesla podcast. I hope all of you enjoyed this week's lightning round mini episode, which I recorded before the event. And it covered some Cybertruck news tidbits that I missed while I was on vacation last week that I wanted to talk about ahead of that launch event. So again, head on over to Patreon. Uh, If at some point you've been listening to this podcast long enough and you think, you know what? Yes, Ryan, I really enjoy the show. I'm going to support you. Those support tiers start at just five bucks a month. And then again, that $10 a month tier gets you that lightning round mini episode each and every single week. So check it out. Patreon.com slash Tesla podcast. Okay. The Cybertruck delivery event. Let's get it started. I will let Elon Musk kick this off. So, so once, once in a while, once in, once in, once in a long while, a product comes along that is uh, rare. That is once in every once every five to ten years, something really special, a, a really unusual product, comes along. And we'll remember those special moments when... (laughs) Indeed. Um, Special moments. Um, So... But but these things are rare. It's very rare that a product comes along that is uh, seemingly impossible. Uh, that, that people said was impossible, that experts said was impossible. And this is one of those times. We have, a, we have a, a car here that experts said was impossible, that experts said would never be made, that uh, it, it, it really is the most... I think, it's, I think it's our best product. I think it's the most unique thing on the road. And finally, the future will look like the future. So. And with that, we then got most of our questions from the past four years answered. Although, interestingly, not many of those answers came in the presentation itself, which was about 20-ish minutes long. 
most of the information showed up after the presentation on the tesla.com slash Cybertruck website immediately after the event. And price and specs were the two primary things that weren't in the presentation, but were on the website. And uh, I don't know if, if you were watching along with it live uh, as I was in the room, I know when when no price and no range were given during the presentation, I I had a little a little like warning bell go off in my head like uh oh, if they're not giving this information in the presentation, it must not be great. Like they must not want <laughs> to to actually say this out loud. So let's start there: the price and the specs, and then I'll tell you about the event itself and what it was like to be there a little later on. It was my first trip to Giga Texas. So it was it was a really, uh, definitely a new, unique experience for me. All right, the dual motor, now referred to as the all-wheel drive version of the Cybertruck, is $80,000, $79,990. And you will get 340 miles of range, approximately. These are all estimates for now until the EPA certifies it. 340 miles of range, Zero to 60 in, well, either 3.9 seconds, if you want to subtract the rollout, which is how my Model 3 Performance's 3.1 second zero to 60 is measured, so that'd be a bit of an apple to apple there, or 4.1 seconds to 60 with the dual motor, or pardon me, the all-wheel drive, uh, if you do not have the rollout there. So... Let's start right there before we move on to the other trims. And yes, it's trims plural. There are two, not just one other one. There are three total. So the dual motor, this price, $80,000. Well, let's not beat around the bush here. It's quite a bit higher than the 2019 prices, which sadly is a through line for all of this, for this entire Cybertruck information dump higher than expected prices. But on the other hand, with regard to the dual motor specifically, I keep saying dual motor, it's gonna take me a while to break that habit. But the range on the all wheel drive, a pleasant improvement over the guideline that we were given in 2019, which was simply 300 plus. So Tesla definitely, they got the plus in there. 340 is quite nice, 13% higher than that than just 300 which which was that again that guideline in 2019 and really 340 miles is great I and mean, that's right in line with the 3 with the Y and even right in line with the long range X as well only the model S really stays way out in front of that 340 mile range figure in the Tesla lineup all right so that price stings, no doubt. Uh, I, I know it stings me because I'm on record recently on this podcast as saying I thought it would be 65000 for the all-wheel drive that I was way off. And we'll, <laughs> we'll come back to that in a few minutes. So the tri-motor, now simply called the Beast configuration. The Beast Cybertruck, 100 thousand dollars ninety nine thousand nine hundred and ninety dollars for the for the beast uh and it comes complete with the mythical tri-headed dog chimera a little uh chimera logo laser etched onto the lower right corner of the tailgate basically the equivalent of its plaid badge so that will be the only way to tell a beast apart from an all-wheel drive uh, version. And while certainly $100,000 is quite a long way from the $70,000 that Tesla quoted us in 2019, I think what hurts a heck of a lot more than the price on the tri-motor, on the Beast in particular, is the range. 320 miles. Now that is obviously not even close to 500 not even in the ballpark of 500 miles of range. Clearly, the dual and the tri are then using the very same 122 kilowatt hour battery pack. I reported that 
kilowatt hour figure to you, what, two episodes back. That has since been confirmed uh, this week with all the information coming out. With the, the Beast getting a slight range penalty from, of course, the weight of that extra motor, that third motor, and the power it's drawing, just as the Plaid S and X have that slight range penalty compared to their dual motor long range counterparts. And out of all of this, obviously I'm nowhere near done, but out of, out of all the information that we got this week, I think I probably speak for a lot of people in the Tesla community that have Cybertruck reservations when I say that this, the tri-motor range figure, the reality versus the 2019 number we were given, this is the toughest pill to swallow out of all of it. Not that the $100,000 is pretty tough to swallow too, but if it had been $100,000 with 500 miles of range, that would have been one thing. But $100,000 and it's nowhere close to 500 miles, it's 320 miles instead, that is a really tough pill to swallow. So many of us, myself included, were wanting that 500 miles of range. For me, I wanted the tri-motor primarily for that 500 miles of range. The, the performance would have been a sweet, sweet bonus, don't get me wrong. But that's unlike my car, my Performance Model 3. I bought that car, I chose the performance version primarily for the performance. With the Cybertruck, my intention was to choose the tri-motor primarily for the range. And really, when it comes to the truck specifically, the truck category, it's not just driving 500 miles, but for a lot of us, admittedly, probably not myself, because I'm already on record on this podcast as saying I will probably do near zero or zero actual truck things with the cyber truck. I want it for the stainless steel. Um, but towing, towing was so crucial to that 500 mile figure that we were all hoping for and, and quite frankly, anticipating because then you'd be able to tow at least 250 miles. If you've got a 500 mile range truck, that means you're good to tow at least 250, which is going to get you from supercharger to supercharger at that point. So as it stands, speaking for myself, I am priced out of the tri-motor that, I'm ho- that I was hoping for. Again, sure the performance would have been awesome, but it was that range that was really calling to me because that's what we were gonna do. My, my wife was on board with this, and she still is, but she was, she was really on board with the, the tri-motor with the idea that yes, we could go really anywhere, just out camping, out into the wilderness with 500 miles of range and not really worry about uh, a, a supercharger issue. They're, they're, we'd find one. We've, we've got enough range where we'll find one no matter where we go. And so now for me, Beast Tri-Motor is just not happening uh, at all. Although, and 500, more importantly, forget about me, 500 miles of range is not happening right now, except it kind of is in a year from now. More on that in a minute. Hang on. There's there's so much to unpack here. Let's get to the performance of Beast, though. Let's let's uh, let's turn the frowns upside down here for a minute. Zero to sixty on the Beast, two point six seconds. A figure that is not only insane it's ridiculous for a, for any vehicle let alone one that size it's also quite a bit better than the 2.9 second figure that tesla gave his guidance in 2019 so this is a completely nutty number 2.6 seconds uh you're you're re- you're really right on the tail of the model x plaid at that point and the the cyber truck's a good bit bigger than the, the Model X is. So that's pretty wild. Now, to put that in a little bit of perspective, not that all of not that any of you need any perspective when it comes to or context when it comes to Tesla performance. You're all well acquainted with it by now. It would take a quarter million dollar plus supercar to roll up on you at a red light if you're driving a beast cybertruck for you to have really 
any chance whatsoever of losing a 0 to 60 sprint to any other car. I mean, or I guess it it would take a plaid Model S <laughs> rolling up next to you at that light to uh or a, a, a and well, I said quarter million dollar plus supercar and then I the the Lucid Air Sapphire just popped into mind, which isn't a supercar in form, but it is in function and in price. That's a that's a 1.85 second 0 to 60 car with a quarter million dollar price tag on it. So anyway, my point stands. You're going to need a particularly fat wallet uh, in comparison to the Beast. Even even at its $100,000 price tag, it's going to take a lot more money to beat you off the line than uh, than than you could possibly imagine. I mean, it's it's pretty crazy. So 2.6 seconds is absolutely wild, and I'm totally here for it. Now, part of the presentation, and in fact, it, as I watched it back again on the recording, because of course, you know, I was I was there in the room live, and I'll tell you about that experience in a little while. But watching it back live on Twitter, and it fi- it did finally get uploaded to YouTube. So if you do want to watch the whole thing, uh, the YouTube might actually be the easiest way to go. So just go to youtubecom Tesla. But the part of the presentation that I think really got the biggest crowd reaction out of everything was when Tesla, they, they, were, they got to the part of the presentation that was about performance. And Tesla, to their credit, the content team, they cle- very cleverly edited a drag race video between a 2023 Porsche 911 and a Beast Cybertruck. And when I say cleverly edited, it's because they didn't show you until the two cars crossed the finish line, and yes, the Cybertruck did beat it, that the Cybertruck was in fact towing an identical 2023 Porsche 911 across the finish line on this quarter mile drag strip run. So uh, the quarter mile time, 10.9 seconds on the Beast which is just awesome. Uh, one of the the uh, YouTube videos, one of the automotive journalists that did get early access, it was an extremely short list. I'm going to tell you about more of those later. But one of them specifically mentioned in their video that even at a sub-50% state of charge, they were able to continually repeat the 0-60 to 60 time and the quarter mile time. And uh, it was also noted that it's doing this on all-terrain tires, not even street tires. It's doing this on all-terrain tires, which just makes it all the more crazy in the very best of ways. But as I was saying a minute ago, personally speaking, and I know I've heard from a lot of you already, either by leaving your comments on the Patreon poll that I'm going to get to in a few minutes or social media comments or emailing me, a lot of you are in the same boat. I... I can't do $100,000. And it's $100,000 without either enhanced autopilot or full self-driving. So, you know, it's it's a lot of money. It's And it's a lot more than $70,000. Even if you factor in inflation, it's well past inflation. In fact, I mean, if, if you zoom out for kind of that 10,000 foot view of this entire couple of days the Thursday of the event and then kind of Friday as I record here on Friday night where the embargo lifted on the, the, you know, the automotive journalists and we got kind of more information and really we're digesting it today. If you zoom out for that 10,000 foot view, as I like to do, what I think is fair to say is that the performance numbers that the Cybertruck landed on all exceeded the expectations that Tesla set for us almost four years ago. While the range numbers and price numbers all under delivered, in fact, I uh, it you know four point because four point one seconds or three point nine on the dual motor, which I think is where most of us that are going to buy a Cybertruck are going to land, and that will become a little more clear in a moment when I tell you about the third version of the Cybertruck. But that dual motor, three point nine seconds to sixty with a rollout, even four point one seconds without. I mean, that's quite impressive. I think in the 2019 reveal, they had quoted something like 4.5 or 4.6 for that. So again, they, they beat that 
that 0 to 60 performance number quite handily from the initial 2019 estimate. So, finally, the third skew here. We knew from Tesla's VIN decoder that they submitted to NHTSA that I told you about a few episodes back that the single motor Cybertruck, the $39,990 vehicle that got, at the time, the biggest audible gasp in the room at the reveal in 2019, which I remember vividly because I, again, had the pleasure of being there. Uh, so that that single motor vehicle that was going to be 40 k well, it's not going to be made in 2024, which, again, we knew from that VIN decoder a few weeks back. But it turns out Tesla, they are going to build it, or at least they say they're going to build it as of now. They say it will debut in 2025, but it will be $61,000, which is over 50% more than that $40,000 figure that, again, caused that biggest audible gasp in the room back at Hawthorne at the reveal in 2019. And quite frankly, I mean, I got to be honest, you know, I, I got to call it like I see it on this podcast, because if I do nothing but praise all the time, then that praise starts to ring hollow. You've got to keep it honest. You've got to keep it fair. And I'm going to say right here, my opinion, but the single motor Cybertruck seems like a really lousy deal. $61,000 for 250 miles of range. That is, again, a full 50% more than what we were quoted in 2019. Now, in fairness, you do at least qualify if, if you meet the income requirements. You can get the tax credit on the single motor version in 2025, which at that point in time will be, uh, in, I mean, in fact, in 2024, it will start to become a point of sale credit. So you don't even have to file for it. You'll just get it. And then you'll have to submit proof later on your taxes that, that you had that, you know, you met the income requirements and all that stuff. But you'll get it right at the point of sale. So that'll bring it down to $53,500. $53, Still a lot of money for not a ton of range. We also don't know what kind of battery that the single motor is. If it's going to be an LFP battery, similar to the base Model 3 and the base Model Y, then, then okay, the 250 becomes a little bit easier to stomach. But we're probably not going to know for a while because, again, Tesla says it won't be made until 2025, which could mean as soon as one year from now, you know, the 2025 model year, which will start production and start deliveries in November, that's typically, that's how Tesla has operated with their other four cars. Or 2025 could mean that the single motor doesn't go into production until near the end of calendar 2025, which naturally would put it almost two years out. And honestly, and I've seen some comments from the Ride the Lightning audience on this already, I almost wonder if this is going to end up being a standard range Model 3 situation from back in 2019, the whole fulfilling the $35,000 car promise where Tesla's going to offer this standard range Cybertruck, sing single motor Cybertruck, for a short time and then kill it. Because I mean, if that happens, I won't be surprised because, again, it's kind of a vicious cycle, right? If, if enough customers agree with me, that 61K for a 250-mile single-motor rear-wheel drive, not all-wheel drive Cybertruck is not a great deal, then not a lot of people are going to buy it. And if not a lot of people buy it, Tesla will discontinue it and stop making it. So we'll see what happens with that, but we won't see for at least a year, maybe up to two. So as I was saying earlier, I was way off on my $65,000 prediction for the dual motor and my $85,000 prediction for the tri-motor. In fact, I would go so far as to say that I think even the most pessimistic pricing prediction was probably off, was probably too optimistic. And I would, I would look at this, so I like to look at this stuff in the context of Tesla's own history. So compared to the Model 3, and why do I bring up the Model 3? Well, because the 3 was arguably Tesla's last 
properly new vehicle. No disrespect to the Model Y here. It's, it's Tesla's top seller and it's the best selling car in the world. But the Model 3 was, at least at the start of production, it's kind of evolved a little bit over time, but we were told that the Model Y was 75% or so of the same parts as a Model 3. So I wouldn't really call it a new vehicle. It was on the same platform, whole thing. So the Model 3 was really Tesla's last properly new vehicle. And when I think back to that, 2017, the launch of the Model 3, I would politely argue that the Model 3 under-promised and over-delivered on both price and range. And I feel that the opposite has largely happened with the Cybertruck, particularly on the Beast. Because if you remember back, if you were following along with all things Tesla back in 2017, and if you didn't, that's okay. I'm going to give you the quick little history lesson here. Back in 2017, we did not know the Model 3's range until the night of the delivery event. We didn't know the price either. We didn't know the price of the range until the night of the delivery event, not unlike the Cybertruck delivery event this week. And the Model 3 turned out to be a 310-mile range car, which I will note was later revised up by the EPA and Tesla to, if I remember correctly, about 325 miles because that rear-wheel drive long-range Model 3 was so crazy efficient. A lot of you listening right now are driving that car and you've had it for the last five or so years and no doubt you love that car because it is a crazy efficient vehicle and for a long time it was the most efficient Tesla and probably the, the best value that Tesla offered for a very, very long time. So for the proper context with the Model 3, because again, at, remember, at that time, the S and X were the only two cars Tesla made. And they were, you know, they were luxury cars, they were upscale. The Model 3 was breaking into the mainstream or more into the mainstream and, and gonna be Tesla's first volume production car, high, high production car. The Model S 75D at the time got 269 miles of range and cost, again, I'm, I'm going a little off memory here, but I believe it was about seventy to $75,000 in that range. And then the, the long-range Model S, the 100D, I have a clearer memory for some reason, that was a 330-mile range car, and that was about eighty-five to 90000 bucks, somewhere right in, in that range. So when the Model 3 came in at 50 grand with a 310 mile range, what did Tesla do? Well, besides eat into the Model S sales a lot, which they've still never really recovered from in terms of the Model S sales, but they raised the bar on what range to expect from your Tesla. And uh, while well, again, the Model 3 eight into the Model S's sales quite a lot. As a result, I don't really think Tesla minded that because they wanted the high volume sales with the Model 3. If they sold three Model 3s for every Model S, that's, a, that's good for them. And then of course later that would come to be with the Y as well. So all that, all of that Model 3 history lesson and context is to say that I think with the Cybertruck this week, they did not raise that range expectation bar. I thought they would. I said it here on this podcast. I thought they would hit the 500 miles. I thought they would raise the bar again for what to expect from your Tesla. And I just, I really thought they were going to do it. Now, there is another piece of this, quite literally, another piece of this to talk about. Uh, which I'll talk about in a couple minutes, called the Range Extender. It will be available in one year from now, late 2024. It's going to come at a dual cost, however. Both a big chunk of your Cybertruck's bed and a big chunk out of your wallet. Hold that thought. I will come back to it because that is its own topic unto itself. Now, my, my 
final thought on this before I move on to the features of the truck, including this range extender, is that I think it is now fair to ask if the next generation Tesla Roadster, whenever it comes along, is going to deliver the 200 kilowatt hour battery pack that Tesla promised at that event, as well as the 620 miles of range that Tesla promised back at that unveiling in 2017, or if that's going to end up being significantly less in the end as well. So just, just, I'm not casting a judgment at all. I'm just floating that idea out there as food for thought, something to keep in the back of your mind for whenever the Roadster finally comes back into the picture and, and starts to get towards production, which hopefully is going to be within the next 12 to 18 months. So, this week's Patreon poll, which I had I'd made a post at the beginning of the week saying, you know, I normally post the Patreon poll, which is available to everybody. You don't have to be backing me on Patreon to vote in it. It's open to the public. I normally post those on Tuesday nights. Well, I'd let everybody know up front that I was going to wait and hold the poll until after we got all the Cybertruck information. So I put it up on Thursday night in order to get your reactions to the big Cybertruck launch event. So, the poll asked, what do you think about the Cybertruck's price and specs? Here are the results of that poll. 34% of you, a full third of the vote, said, I'm buying the dual motor. 27% of you voted, it's more expensive than I thought, so I'm priced out. 26% of you chose other at the bottom with my request to please comment below. And there were plenty of, there were a ton of great comments on this, which I'll read a couple of in a moment. And then just 8% of you said, I'm buying the beast. And I say, hey, more power to you guys. Congratulations. Please let me drive it sometime because that I cannot wait to see what that's like. And then 5% of you said, uh, my, my, (laughs) artfully worded, maybe overly verbose poll choice was uh, the 5% of you said they're making a single motor after all. Yay. Even if it's not out, not out until 2025, I'll wait for that. So uh, again, I'm buying the dual motor was the, the biggest winner in the vote there uh, with the next, the runner up being a number of you saying that you're priced out. Uh, a couple of comments from, again, the ton of great comments there. Again, you can go view all those comments at patreon.com slash Podcast if you like. Since, again, that post is open to the public, you can, you can see it. But longtime listener and very kind Patreon backer Keith, who refers to himself as the Tesla hillbilly. You've heard him call in before. And as a treat for me, I was delighted to meet Keith in person at the event. He found me, he said hello, we got to talk for a couple minutes. He won the shareholder lottery, so he got tickets to the event, and I'm so happy to have gotten to meet him after many years of listening to his phone calls here. So Keith left this comment on the poll, which, quite honestly, I thought summed up my feelings pretty well. Keith said, I will be purchasing the dual motor. My original reservation is for a tri-motor, however, the price for that is cost prohibitive for me. Less than expected range and lack of designated storage area for a spare tire played into this decision. However, all that being said, the overall specs and design of the truck still make it a very compelling vehicle, and that is why I will still be purchasing one. So yes, well said, Keith, on that. Uh, A couple of other comments here. Anthony Edington, Anthony, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name correctly, was one of the folks who said, I don't think they will end up making the rear-wheel drive version. Uh, Keith Gaines, with a a thought-provoking comment of his own, he said, I'm interested in the dual motor, which is what my reservation states, but I will not be buying it for a year or two. I made the mistake of buying the Model 3 too early and missed a heated steering wheel and paid a premium price, which is, again, a fair comment on that as well. So... Uh, thanks to everybody who commented, who voted. And yeah, for me, I will say, instead of 
the $85,000 500-mile truck that I was predicting and hoping for, I will be buying a $72,500 340-mile range truck. Because, and why do you, and we, you're asking, well, where do you get 72.5? It's because the dual motor at 79.990 does just barely qualify for the tax credit on an electric truck. The MSRP cap is $80,000, same as the, the Model X, what that is subject to. Sedans, cars, are subject to a $55,000 MSRP cap. So, the dual motor just does squeak in for that tax credit, which again, by the time that realistically any of us take delivery, meaning calendar 2024, that tax credit will be there as a point of sale credit or discount, if you want to call it that. So 72.5 for a 340 mile range truck. Admittedly, not quite what I was hoping for, but... It's still pretty sweet. Although, again, it, you do kind of have to take a look at it and go, it, even though it's apples to oranges, if you're just talking about range and utility, and maybe even throw performance in if you want, it's still quite a bit more money than a Model Y with similar range and performance specs. So something to, you know, there's a reason that the Model Y is the best-selling car in the world. Okay, I'm going to pause here and just tell you about my friends at Accelerate Auto and their X-Care extended warranty policy that is available on any Tesla, which also includes, optionally, you don't have to do it, but they now offer battery and drivetrain coverage as well, which is you know potentially a huge peace of mind to have on your extended warranty policy. So... You know, you don't, you're not necessarily stuck with Tesla's own extended warranty, which is only two years, 25,000 extra miles, and you have to buy it before your factory warranty is up. The X-Care policy can be purchased anytime, and it doesn't matter if you bought the car new from Tesla or bought the car secondhand somewhere else, and the plan is customizable up to 10 years, up to 125,000 miles, so check them out at accelerateauto.com. That's X-C-E-L-E-R-A-T-E-A-U-T-O.com slash X-C-A-R-E. And don't forget to use the discount code LIGHTNING for $100 off your purchase. So again, Xcare, the Xcare policy, I do recommend it. I've got one myself. I have a three-year, 40,000-mile policy myself. Okay. Back to the features of this truck, and I promise I'm circling around to that range extender here momentarily. But first, some other features. Number one on this list for a reason, power share. Franz von Holzhausen had hinted at this in when I asked him this point-blank direct question during my most recent interview with him back in January, and I am thrilled that this feature is indeed here. So you can charge other Teslas with your Cybertruck or really any other EV. You can power your home. You can power your job site. And the good news here is it appears to be a standard feature that doesn't require any additional cost. So this is such an awesome, long-requested, long-wished-for feature that... Uh, I will say I'm genuinely shocked that it wasn't mentioned at all during the presentation. How was this left out? This is such a, pe so many people wanted this, and this is such a great thing. <laughs> I don't know, how, how was this omitted? That is a, that's a strange one to me. But regardless of that, that's fine. The, the event's over. The important thing is that the power share feature is there. Now, on the subject of power, we knew about the three outlets in the bed. I told you about those three, four episodes ago. Two 120-volt outlets and one 240-volt outlet. But it turns out there are also two 120-volt traditional household power outlets in the cabin. One in the first row and one in the second row. 
Nice. I like that. Uh, in fact, you know, as I kind of reflect back on it, Tesla didn't talk about a lot of the great features in the truck in the presentation. Like, for instance, there was nothing about the interior of the truck. Nothing at all. Like, zero. Nothing about the storage in the bed. And, I mean, we've seen that in the, the pictures, the release candidates. It's been talked about. There's a little storage thing under the under the vault towards the tailgate. But, you know, just no, there was nothing about the interior mentioned at all. So that I just found that, uh, found a lot of the, 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 you know, the things that they chose to not highlight were a bit of a surprise. Anyway, back to other features. The air suspension, we kind of knew all about that from previous comments by Elon, by Lars, by other, other Tesla executives on earnings calls. But the air suspension not only will reach a maximum ride height of 17 inches, you know, no rear differential hanging down. You got a flat bottom of the truck, so it's an actual 17-inch clearance. But I can tell you from witnessing it firsthand myself that the air suspension goes up and down really fast. Like, it is quick. It's not like some cars where the air suspension takes forever to go up or down a couple inches. This thing has, what, I think 14 inches of travel, and it goes up or down real quick. Very impressive on the air suspension. Another feature that I first learned about on the way to the presentation. So the way that Tesla had it set up is you entered Giga Texas through the lobby, the front, the front doors, and there were some really neat displays there was a structural battery pack of a Cybertruck with the seats mounted to it. There was a Cybertruck like frame sitting there as well. And then you made your way in and then they, they led you on a walking tour of the Cybertruck production line. I'm going to talk more about this a little later on in the podcast. But I came, you know, I'm, I'm taking a little time at each station. In fact, I wish I had more time. At one point they were like, okay, everybody needs to get in there for the presentation. It's going to start soon. So I kind of wish I'd had more time to, to go through that, that walking tour. But anyway, I came to a, one of the stations that, was, that said that talked about steer by wire. I'm like, wait, what? The, oh, okay, they're just confirming steer by wire right here on the walking tour. I don't even have to wait for the presentation for it. So I tweeted that out, and that kind of, <laughs> I think that, that was news. I mean, certainly it was news to me. But it was covered in the presentation, and I'm going to let Elon Musk explain the benefits of steer by wire. Um, it has steer by wire, which is it, if, it's one of the things where most people don't know what that means. But um, it, it's what it's how modern jets are designed. The steer by wire, which, which gives you variable gain. So if you turn the wheel a small the steering the steering yoke a small amount in the parking lot, it will turn the wheels a lot. But if you, if you turn it on, on a highway, it turns the wheels a small amount. So it, it dynamically adjusts how, how much the wheels turn according to uh, what your speed is. Um, and this actually makes it very easy to drive. It actually, and it has a turning circle less than a Model S. So this thing can practically turn it, you know, rotate on a you know, dime, basically. Um, it has incredible low speed man maneuverability. A tighter turning radius than a Model S. That's pretty sweet. Also, I would have to imagine that the Model, speaking of the Model S, that the S and the X are probably also going to get steer by wire sooner rather than later. And that will make the yoke option on the S and X probably a, a quite a bit more appealing. And speaking of yokes, the next gen Roadster, whose prototype has a yoke in it, I think you can. If the S and X are probably going to get steer by wire at some point soonish, whenever the Roadster does finally come along, I think you can guarantee that the Roadster is going to have that steer by wire because thanks to that variable ratio steering that the steer by wire will afford, it'll make the yoke totally usable like an F1 racing yoke. So that was one of my takeaways from steer by wire. Now, here's an interesting piece that's not in the car, a feature that's not there. I mean, it is, but just not in physical hardware form. There is no rear view mirror 
The 2019 Cybertruck prototype had one of those mirrors like the Chevy Bolt has where it's a regular rear view mirror. And then if you push a button, it turns into a camera mirror where it changes to the display of your backup camera. So we all thought the Cybertruck was going to have that because if the tonneau is closed, that's sealing off the, the rear window and thus sealing off any visibility out there. So you would need the camera to be able to see. Well, thanks to Marquez Brownlee, AKA MKBHD's excellent 40 minute video. He was one of the very, very short list of, uh, of folks who got early access to the Cybertruck under embargo for today, Friday, as I record 40 minute video from Marquez, well worth a watch. And I learned from that, that there is no physical rear view mirror at all. Instead, what Tesla has done has, is they've gone for a software solution here, putting a rear view camera display, like a, a you know long rectangular horizontal display in the top left corner of the center touchscreen that's on at all, it's there at all times when the car is on. So yes, Tesla has managed to delete another part. They love to delete parts and it must have made Elon very happy when they worked out the software solution for this and said, yep, we don't need a rear view mirror. Forget about that. And whatever, you know, if that costs $1, $2, $4, that's, that's money saved by the company on the trucks. And it remains to be seen how the end user experience will be on that. Because I have to admit, my gut reaction to that is that it's a disappointment, but in practice, it could just mean glancing down to see behind you when the vault cover is open or closed instead of just glancing up, which is, you know, not unlike how, I mean, a lot of people were really, they were getting really hand ringy about the lack of an instrument cluster in the Model 3 before that car came out. And they were like, well, what? You're going to have to look over on the center screen to see your speed. And well, living with the Model 3, it, I think for most of us, I think it's fair to fair for me to speak for most of us here that it was really a non-issue at all because instead of glancing down a little bit to see your speed on the instrument cluster, you simply glanced to the right slightly to see your speed in the upper left corner of the model three center screen. So this, uh, this may end up just being as simple as that. You're just glancing. You're just having to retrain your years of however many years you've been driving. You'll have to just kind of reprogram yourself similar to with the three and the Y where you're, you retrain yourself to glance to the right to see your speed instead of, instead of down. Uh, and I will add that I'm optimistic that, that it is going to be that simple and, and that much of a non-issue because none of the hands-on Cybertruck videos that I watched, whether from Marquez or others, I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little bit more about those in a couple minutes, but none of them complained about it. So that seems like a very good sign. And really, uh, after I've now gone over the specs, I've gone over the features of this thing. I have to say, uh, yes, I plan to buy it, but I really, and I do want it ASAP. That is, a, that is a hope. I would really love to get a dual motor as soon as possible to replace my wife's aging Mini Cooper 19-year-old car that is just not worth putting any more money into. But uh, I very much, just at, at the very least, I would really love to drive one as soon as possible to experience the steer by wire and experience the, the, uh, the insane torsional stiffness of that the, that the exoskeleton provides that was talked about. Like I really want to see, I mean, Marquez talked, uh, talked up how well it drives, uh, top gear was one of the other ones. They talked up how well it drives and, and so did Jason Camisa from, I hope I'm saying that his last name correctly from Haggerty. Uh, those are the three big videos, and they all talked about how well 
the Cybertruck drive. So I just, I can't wait to drive it. Now they did all say that the steer by wire and the variable ratio, that it, it particularly at low speeds with the rear wheel steering, it, that it does take some remapping of your brain, but that it happens pretty quickly. And then once that, once that switch is flipped, that the truck just drives awesome. So I really, really can't wait to hopefully some way, somehow at least drive one pretty soon. I don't know if I, if by chance any of you in my lovely audience are, are getting, are going to end up getting your hands on, on one of the first cyber trucks and you happen to be in the, in the greater San Francisco Bay area, I would be thrilled if you would reach out to me and, and uh, maybe let me come check it out. Anyway, I'm not done here. There is more to talk about. And that is the next category, accessories. A ton of them hit the online Tesla shop. So many that I'm not going to go through all of them. You can check them out for yourself at shop.tesla.com at your convenience. But I do want to go over several of them. Maybe more than several. Maybe a good number, but not all of them. That's There really are a lot. And I'm going to start with that little just dangling... <laughs> Easter egg, or not, that's not the wrong thing, dangling carrot that I, that I left you a little earlier in the podcast about this range extender. So the range extender was boggling our minds from the, the event space. So what happened was, I'll just give you a little insight. When you're, and I experienced this in my day job when I'm at conventions, so it's kind of a similar thing. You know, if you're watching at home on the live stream, you are often getting more information and even potentially better information than I'm getting on site. Now, that might seem backwards, but what's happening is you're watching at home, so you've got the tesla.com slash Cybertruck website in front of you, you've got social media in front of you, you've got, you know, journalists that are that are uh, tweeting and you know, you're, you're getting, you're taking in all this information. When we're on site, the, what, the term I always like to use for this is we're in the eye of the hurricane. And th this is not a complaint, by the way. I am so grateful to have gotten to be there. I wanna clarify, I'm not complaining right now. But what happened was when the presentation was over and there, was, there were no prices and no specs given, we were kind of all standing around like, okay, well, wait, what? And then people were checking their phones and like, oh, okay, wait, there's, there's the information on the website. So everybody's looking at their phones and we're, we're scrolling down to the bottom of the page on our phones and seeing the specs for, for single motor, for beast and for all wheel drive, excuse me, rear wheel drive, not single motor. I got, again, it's going to take me some time to, to rewire that. But, and, and on there is, okay, you know, dual motor range. 340 miles, range extender, up to 470 miles. I'm like, wait, what? Range extender? So, huh? What is that? What is that? That's a strange, we've never heard anything like that with regard to Tesla before. So here we go. Thankfully, it all got, this is why I am glad I had, I had to, I got to sleep on all this. That I didn't have, I didn't have to like go straight back to my hotel and record this podcast immediately. I have a chance, I've had a chance to digest it all, get all the correct information and present all of that to you, hopefully in a way that is informative and maybe even entertaining for you as well. But so the range extender is the big thing here. It's the big piece of the puzzle in every sense of the word. So functionally it's big, size wise it's big and price wise it's big. And I'm gonna be honest with you, it is for me a disappointment. First and foremost, because of the price. Now, I will caveat this. This is an unofficial price, but it, I'm pretty confident that it's going to be real. I, I mean, I hope it's less, but the price is $16,000 for the range extender. Now, this again, this is not official on the Tesla website, but what intrepid members of the Tesla community did is they went and looked in the HTML code of the tesla.com website and found it hidden in there. They found the $16,000 price for the range extender in there. So that seems 
highly likely that it is in fact $16,000. So I'm left to ask myself, how did we get here? And the, the, the theory, the, the reason that I keep coming back to, it's the, it's the best thing I've got, is that did the 4680 battery cells just not progress in energy density, in, in, ener- in output? Did, did, the, did that process, did the 4680s just not progress in the way that Tesla expected them to by now? That's, that's the question I'm at. I mean, that's, that's the best I've got. Now, if you do want the range extender, it's not available, as I said earlier, until late 2024. It requires installation at a service center. And when I'm talking about a disappointment size-wise, in addition to the price, I say that because the range extender will take up a third of your vault's bed, closest to the cabin, so it's mounted towards at, in the middle of the truck, probably for you know weight distribution reasons and handling reasons. But it will occupy a full one third of your Cybertruck's vault. That's a lot. Now, I had a, t- a, uh, a Tesla employee that I spoke to after the event likened it to a toolbox mounted in the bed, like a permanently mounted toolbox in the bed of a pickup. And while I will agree with that, that that's a reasonable comparison, what I, the reason, part of the reason I'm disappointed at this is that this solution, it, it honestly just doesn't feel very Tesla to me. And the reason I say that is because it seems like a very clunky, like literally clunky, and very inelegant solution. It just doesn't seem like their MO at all. Because when I first saw a range extender, I honestly thought it was just going to be a bigger battery pack. And that it was phrased that way because Tesla wanted to keep it to three SKUs, rear wheel drive, all wheel drive, and beast, rather than having five different SKUs to order, which would make things inevitably more confusing for people, especially when it's like, well, wait, dual motor and dual motor range extender. And so I just thought it was kind of a a way to package the marketing, like just pack it. Marketing is not the right term, but just package the presentation of options in a, in a cleaner way. That's what I thought this was going to be. I just thought it was going to be a bigger battery pack in the same way it always has with Tesla. You know, the base model three, And it's 55 kilowatt hour battery pack versus the, what, 78 or so kilowatt hour battery pack in the long range three or the, and and the performance three, just a bigger, I thought it would be a bigger battery pack in the Cybertruck, bigger than the 122 kilowatt hour pack. But no, it is a gigantic extra battery pack, a physical extra battery pack that must weigh a good bit too. It's 50 kilowatt hours, by the way, which basically means you are hauling around, in addition to your 122 kilowatt hour Cybertruck battery pack, it's like you're hauling around the battery pack of a base Model 3 as well. Pretty close, not not exactly, but pretty close. So uh, I have to imagine that with that bit of extra weight, that your zero to 60 times probably going to be a tick or two slower, right? Now, if you're getting the beast, if you're, if you're upgrading the range of your beast, I'm sure you're still going to be under three seconds. And, you know, it might not be 2.6, but let's say, in fact, let's say it's a, it's a three tenths of a second zero to 60 penalty, which would put it at 2.9 seconds, and that range extender on the beast would give you 440 miles of range and zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds, which, well, those two figures are very close to the 2019 spec at that point. Although, for quite a lot more money. 
in order to get 440 miles of range on the Tri-Motor Cybertruck, you will be spending $116,000. Again, this is if the $16,000 price that the intrepid members of the Tesla community found in the Tesla.com website code, if that $16,000 price proves to be correct. So $116,000 for the absolute best range, best performance Cybertruck. Uh, now, the dual motor, sorry, the all-wheel drive gets up to 470 miles of range. So that's actually sniffing the 500 at that point. But again, you're, you're, have to, you're having to spend $96,000 to get there. But that's the one, you know, that's okay. 470 miles, zero to 60 in, let's just call it the low fours at that point, maybe 4.3, 4.4. And, uh, and you know, that's, that's okay. Again, still not cheap, but that I could see being appealing. I, I'm not sure how many beast owners are going to go for the range extender because of the performance hit. Because you are literally, you are paying, you're not getting anything else for your extra 20000 from if you go from all-wheel drive to beast. The, the performance is it. You're, you're getting the third motor and the 0 to 60 time. It, it, you don't get any extra payload capacity, towing capacity. You are, that is a $20,000 performance premium but you know maybe you want to offset the range hit which okay yeah you can do it if you if you want to spend the money you can do it so we shall see although i will say this the range extender does do one thing i think very very smartly from kind of the supply and and business side of things for tesla what the range extender does is it makes sure that every Cybertruck is carrying around only as many battery cells as its owner really needs, thus saving Tesla a whole lot of extra cells that can go into making more Cybertrucks. Because for the, I think we can all agree, for the overwhelming majority of customers, 340 miles of range on the all-wheel drive and 320 on the Beast are probably going to be sufficient. Now, the minority of customers that really want that extra range, maybe they're going to be doing some serious towing on a frequent basis. Maybe they've got a, maybe you've got a boat that you like to tow to the lake uh, on a frequent basis every summer, something like that. But for those customers, and again, I think it is, it is fair and I'm not, I'm not trying to disparage anyone. I just think factually it's going to be true that it is going to be a minority of customers. I just don't think it's going to be a, a, a ton of people. For that group of customers that really want that extra range and are willing to pay that pretty penny for it, as well as sacrifice the bed space, those folks can very intentionally opt in to the range extender rather than putting than Tesla just putting those extra cells into every truck and certainly having to make the price higher as well thereby, again, yeah, making the trucks cost more and meaning that many customers would be out there hauling around a ton more battery cells than they'd really ever need. So from that point of view, I completely get the range extender. I totally get it from that side of it. Where I just really think, as I said, that it just it just doesn't seem like it's in Tesla's MO. It's, it just, it doesn't make sense is in how inelegant of a solution it is. Like, and what the re, what I'm saying there is, was there not, could this not have been put under the second row of seats? Because the seats are all on risers, by the way. So could this not have been put there? Could this not have been put in, at, a, in the, uh, the vault sub trunk space? Or both, right? Because the, it, you know, those are smaller, maybe, maybe both of them. Right. So I just, I, I, those would have been more elegant solutions because they wouldn't have robbed you of any bed space, let alone a full third of it. 
So that's where the range extender just baffles me. I just, I, it, to me, it says from just studying this company for so many years now, it says to me that, that the, this wasn't in the original plan, like that they, they did the best they could and figured out a solution to, to when they saw, they must've seen, okay, we're not going to make it on the range figures that we'd hope for, but okay, we can do it this way. We can, we can like literally bolt on this auxiliary battery pack, like a, like an iPhone block charger that you stick on the back of your, your smartphone. Like we could do this, but oh, I guess, well, we've just, yeah, I, I mean, I'm sure they, I mean, I'm not pretending for a second to be smarter than the Tesla engineers. Of course I'm not, I'm an idiot compared to those guys, those people. So I'm sure they looked at putting it under the seats or in the space where the the sub trunk is in the vault. But I, it's just it just really does to me reek of a of a solution that kind of was not planned for, right? That they just were not planning for this scenario. So I don't know. I mean. It is what it is. I'd be curious to hear what what all of you have to think about the range extender situation. And if any of you, I think that's going to be the poll for next week, honestly. If you swing on by on, I might even just put it up on Monday, honestly. Uh, Monday night, just put up, put up this week's Patreon poll that's available to anyone, whether you're a Patreon backer or not. And just poll all of you about the range extender and factoring in the price and the the how it takes up part of the bed. And I, I want to hear what all of you think about that. So take a look for that Patreon poll early this week. All right. There are more accessories to cover. There is a spare tire and tool kit, which is, uh, it's not cheap. It's $1,250 and it has to sit in the vault. There is no dedicated space to hide it anywhere. So it will take up space in your vault, which you heard Keith, the Tesla hillbilly, mention from his Patreon poll comment that I read you earlier. Now, the next accessory I want to talk about is one that was a very popular one back at the unveiling when they had the render of it on the website, and that is the Cybertruck Base Camp. They have made it. It is real. That is the big tent thing coming off the the vault coming off the back of your Cybertruck. And it is $2,975. And I will read you the description now. So Tesla says, bring your campsite with you on the road. Featuring an ultralight geodesic airframe design, the Cybertruck base camp tent can be inflated in minutes using a manual pump without the need for any structural poles. A tactical gray kaleidoscope patterned nylon interior keeps you safe from the elements, while screen windows allow for airflow to keep you comfortable. Relax on an ultra soft mattress while taking in a view of the stars. Use the truck bed's outlet to keep your devices charged even while you're off grid. A weather resistant outer shell with an extendable awning offers added protection. The fully collapsible, Self-contained pack is mounted above the truck bed, but below the tonneau cover, conserving bed storage space and range while on the road. Engage tent mode on your vehicle's touchscreen for an enhanced camping experience. And the thought just now occurs to me as I'm looking at the pictures on the website. Uh, does, does that go? I think they've accounted for the possibility of the range extender being there. I think the range extender and the camp, the base camp can be folded up. I think those two things uh, can, can coexist there. But anyway, uh, it says includes the tent assembly, the awning, awning poles, an air pump, L-track brackets, and accessories with stakes and repair kit in parentheses. So weirdly, when they mention relax on an ultra soft mattress, it does not appear to include that mattress, despite the fact that this is a $3,000 accessory. I will tell you that my wife really wants this, because as I've told you, part of the deal of us getting a Cybertruck, she loves to camp 
and I don't. And I said, I will go camping with you with our Cybertruck, and I will sleep in the bed of the Cybertruck in camp mode with with all the HVAC going so I can be nice and comfortable. And she's like, okay, great. And so I sent her the picture of the base camp, and she was like, that's awesome. And then when I got home from Austin and I walked her through it and I, I showed her the price, she very much balked at the price, not that I can blame her. So um, we'll see. I think what's going to happen, I I think I'm going to end up buying it for her is what I think that's what's going to end up what's going to end up happening here which is fine I'm totally on board with that okay let's talk a few more accessories and then I'll wrap things up by talking about the event itself and what it was like to have the privilege of physically being there Um, I have to point this accessory out again I'm not going to talk through all the accessories you can check them all out for yourself but one of the accessories that actually made me laugh out loud is Clear satin paint protection film. Clear satin PPF, which is hilarious because there's no paint to protect. There's, what, why would you get clear, clear film on this truck? Don't do that. If, (laughs) I beg of you, if you're going to wrap, if you choose to wrap your Cybertruck, great. Choose a color PPF, which... There are two, at least out of the gate here, a color paint PPF in either satin black or satin white. Those are $6,500 each installed at the service center. But the the satin, the clear satin PPF is $5,000. The stainless steel doesn't need protecting from, it's not going to get rock chips or it's not going to... Don't do it, please. I can't believe that that option is there. It is almost comical. I mean, I guess the only purpose it serves is, I mean, technically it it protects the truck from scratches, except again, the stainless doesn't need protection from scratches because if it gets scratched, get a heavy duty Scotch-Brite pad. It's like a dark green color because there are a number of different Scotch-Brite pads of varying thicknesses and uh, use cases. You get the heavy-duty Scotch-Brite pad, and then you can blend the scratch out with that Scotch-Brite. So uh, it, <laughs> you really don't need clear satin film on this truck, but, I, I mean, a, I guess if you want to, go for it, but uh, I'm not sure if you're going to end up being too... Too happy with that, because you're... St- <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, two each their own on that one. That, that one just made me crack up. Uh, next up, the light bar. It was awesome on the prototype. You know, the, the light bar at the very top of the truck, the peak of the apex where the windshield, the top of the windshield meets the top of the rear glass. So the light bar is real. It will be available. And I believe that regulatory issues prevented Tesla from offering it as a standard thing. And I have to also add, it's not currently available on the online Tesla shop, but you can see it on the official tesla.com slash Cybertruck website. And it sounds quite impressive from the description. It says it projects light 525 yards, not feet, yards ahead of you. So that is a seriously bright light bar. That's going to be cool for those of you that want to venture out into the wilds. There is also a tailgate ramp for $400. No, the tailgate ramp that the prototype has is not built in. And in fact, the one that you can buy for $400 isn't wide enough to drive an ATV up on in, into the bed. You can drive an ATV into the bed, but you'll need two of the tailgate ramps, one for each side of the tires, the left tires and the right tires. In fact, weirdly, the CyberQuad is mentioned in the product description for the tailgate ramp, so maybe I'll end up being wrong and the CyberQuad will be made one day. Uh, but for the time being, yes, it is... A tailgate ramp, 400 bucks, 
and you'll need two if you want to bring a an ATV up in there. It's it's kind of it's about the width of a ladder. In fact, it looks a lot like a ladder, interestingly enough. One more thing, which is a broken window decal for the rear side window. Yes, you know, a little decal to to emulate the look of when the the steel ball when Franz threw the steel ball and and broke two windows <laughs> on the prototype Cybertruck. I will say, I, you know, this isn't the first time that Tesla has leaned into this. I, I really do appreciate that Tesla has just embraced it and they've, they've made a thing out of it. I'm not sure that I would pay $55 for this window decal to get in on the joke, but it's there if you want it. For what it's worth, Tesla says that this uh, OMFG decal is a limited edition. And why do they call it the OMFG decal? Because if you go back and watch the original unveiling from 2019, the moment that the gl- that the glass breaks, that Franz throws the ball and it breaks the glass, you tes- uh, Tesla, Elon, <laughs> Elon says those four words, the OMFG, like really quick, kind of like under his breath, but you can hear it. So hence the name OFMG decal on that. Uh, I'll mention one other thing here, even though it's not a Cybertruck accessory per se, but there is a 118th scale die cast Cybertruck model that's available in the, the online Tesla shop. It's $225. And surprisingly, it did not sell out, at least when I was making my notes. I better, I better just double check right now before I, I don't want to give you bad information here. If I go to mini Teslas here under lifestyle, it is still available, 225. So, you know, I had talked just, uh, what, two shows ago or so about the Model Y, one, same scale, 118th scale die cast that just went into the store. And so now the Cybertruck die cast is there as well. So that that could make a really awesome gift for the Cybertruck reservation holder in your life. Uh, I could see that being a uh, an interesting one. Interest all I will add it's kind of strangely if you ask me the the die cast is of the prototype not of the final production truck, which I find just given the timing it's a little strange. In fact, I I think I have to kind of respectfully call out the product description here, which says, every detail, curve, and surface is replicated from the same 3D CAD data used to manufacture actual Cybertruck vehicles. That's not actually true because the proportions are a little different on the prototype. The, this die cast being based off the prototype, uh, doesn't, the front end looks a little different. It doesn't have the side mirrors. It has a yoke on the inside. So it is a little different, but it's still very cool. Don't get me wrong. So check that out. It weighs 3.348 pounds, if you're curious. Let's see if that, I wonder if that makes it heavier than the, say, the Model Y 118 scale. Oh yeah, the Model Y one's 2.178 pounds. So it is definitely heftier, as you would expect, being the same scale, right? So it's it's gonna be bigger. So. It still might sell out by the time you hear this, but if you are interested, I would act fast because I think there's a good chance that that will sell out before the holidays. Okay, I know I've been talking for an extremely long time, but I think all of you probably expected that for this episode. Now I want to spend a few minutes talking about the event itself. So uh, all of you watching at home, as it turned out uh, on the live stream, you had a better view of it than I did. So we were kind of crammed into this one corner of the of the factory in Giga Texas, right at the end of the production line. There was no grandstand to, you know, have each row higher than the next so that everybody could see. It, there were I was stuck behind a guy, and if you're listening to this, I, I don't mean any disrespect or, or Ill, Ill intention here. This guy, <laughs> I, I, he was so tall that I was almost offended that he was not kind of in the back. I know that's not fair to say. That's really not fair. But this dude must have been seven foot 13. 
I, I, I love in all like an actual to be actually serious. He had to be six ten for real. Like this guy, it was an exceptionally tall gentleman. Um, but and there were he wasn't the only one. There were other. I mean, it was just tall people everywhere. Uh, because there was just everybody was on flat ground. But what it wasn't the people really that were the problem. It was that there was no stage. Elon was talking on flat ground. He did hop up uh, into the bed of the of a cyber truck, but even that still didn't. It, it, so it was it was a little bit of a. I you know I couldn't really see much in the room, uh, which again I I can't I was I was so grateful to get to go. So it it was just you know I couldn't help but laugh honestly. Like when I'm joking about the seven foot 13 guy. And I'm, just, uh, it is all said, said in, in a loving jest. I, I was so grateful to be there, but, uh, the real highlight of getting to go in all seriousness was the aforementioned walking tour of the cyber truck production line. I have had the distinct privilege and pleasure a few different times over the years, at least pre COVID of doing the Fremont factory tour a few times over the years, and that's, I've told you this a, a, handful, a number of times before, I, the, the word I always use is it's inspiring. I find the Fremont tour absolutely inspiring in a very genuine way, and the Cybertruck pro, uh, production line tour was awesome. It was awesome just to see all the different components, all the different stations, see, seeing half-finished Cybertrucks, seeing fully finished ones just kind of like kind of in the dark in the back. Like it was just, it was so cool to see. Uh, I've got a bunch of pictures on my Instagram. If you'd like to check those out, my, my handle there is DMC underscore Ryan. And that really, the, the walking tour of the Cybertruck production line was absolutely besides the people. Cause I did get to meet a lot of you and connect with a lot of old friends that I haven't seen in a while from the Tesla community. The people are always number one uh, of, the, of the best reason, the, the best part about these things. Number two, for sure, was seeing the Cybertruck production line. That was such a treat, such a privilege, and I'm very grateful for it. I would also like to give a shout out to Anu Arbeck and the Tesla Owners Club Austin, they hosted a fantastic cyber after party, which, you know, anybody could go to. You didn't have to, it wasn't, you know, you didn't have to be one of the people that was lucky enough to get into the event. It was for everybody. It was for the community. So there were tons of people at that. And there were, in fact, a couple of cyber trucks there. Franz even showed up in a cyber truck for just a few minutes and, and said a couple of quick words to the crowd. And I was graciously invited the day before to speak on a Cybertruck themed panel at the event, along with Kim Java, my, my friend there, uh, as well as Ryan from the Kilowatts, hosted by Eli Burton, Starman uh, from My Tesla Adventure, all friends, all great people. I really enjoyed the panel that I got to speak on. They 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 wanted me there. Eli invited me there for to lend my my experience with a stainless steel vehicle to kind of share some of my my wisdom and experience with that. So if you'd like to watch that, I believe it's on the Now You Know YouTube channel with Zach and Jesse, other friends as well, great people in the Tesla community. Zach and Jesse did a great job. They hosted the whole thing. They emceed the whole event. So I actually didn't have time to go to their YouTube channel and see if it was there. I know it was live streamed, so I presume... That live stream is archived, and thus my my panel should be there. I don't know what the time code is, but you'll find it in there somewhere if you're interested. Some other kind of notes from the event itself. I will say, uh, well, I'll say just factually to start with here, there were no test rides given in the production or you know near pro- final final production intent Cybertrucks. And again, I know it's tough to complain about that. Because just getting to be there was such a rare and wonderful privilege. But I, I have to say it was it was kind of a shame that this thing is now out in the world and they not only didn't have rides for us, we didn't there weren't even cyber trucks for anybody to sit in. 
Uh, which again, I, I'm, I hope this doesn't come off as as moping and complaining. I'm not I'm not trying to say that. I just, you know, they they had test rides in the prototype in 2019, and I was lucky enough to get one, and I was hoping to get a ride again in the in the production truck here at the event to to try and compare the two a little bit, right? So that that didn't happen, because um, uh, at least com- if you want to compare, like okay. If you don't want to compare it to the Cybertruck reveal, we can compare it to other launch events. And they did do test rides at the Model 3 launch in 2017 and at the Plaid S launch in 2021. So anyway, a little disappointing there. No test rides. But speaking of those freshly launched Cybertrucks... The initial ones, and it remains to be seen how many of these will fall under this designation, are Founders Series Cybertrucks, similar to how we've, we, there were Founders Series Original Roadsters, Founders Series S, Founders Series X. I don't believe there were any Founders Series 3s or Ys, except they are now known by a different name. The Cybertruck Founders Series are called the Foundation Series. They've changed the terminology on that for whatever reason. And the way to tell those trucks apart from all the others is that they have the same laser etchings, it, the way that the, the beast mode is laser etched into the stainless on the bottom right corner of the tailgate. Foundation series is etched into the stainless on the left front. Fa- Actually, I think on both front fenders, the front front fenders, as well as the top right corner of the tailgate as well. It's a smaller, more subtle one, but I did notice it. It's there. I will say also, we one thing we didn't get clarity on was something that I've been talking about very recently, which is the two interior variations that we've seen. So the the all black and then the partial white. Now on the production line, which was all, you know, staged for this event, the production line wasn't active, obviously for the event itself. But on the production line, I saw, I think nothing but the partial white interiors, meaning the white dashboard trim with the white door panels. But I did also see black interior trucks while I was there too. Now those could have been release candidates, Versus, so, you know, could, were all those partial white ones on the production line, does that, and meaning, are those all going to be beasts? Like, so is something, echoing something I did say a couple episodes back, is the partial white going to be reserved for beast? That remains to be seen. So let me, let me just cut it to you straight here. Let me just be straight with you at the end of this. I'm going to be honest. Overall, just take it whole thing, top to bottom, as far as the, tr- not the event, but the truck itself, the, the, pr- well, the price and the specs, like what, what you get for what you're paying. I'm a little disappointed. I'm disappointed with this. Whereas the Model 3 was the opposite. It was, I was overjoyed by the Model 3 when we learned everything about that. I'm a little disappointed in the Cybertruck. I think this was a little bit of a miss for Tesla, and I'm seeing that sentiment echoed all over the Tesla community. Now, I'm not speaking for everyone. There are plenty of people that are stoked in every way, shape, or form. They feel great, but I do think this was a bit of a miss for Tesla overall, and the reason I say that is because they had a chance to blow everyone away with pricing and specs, or even pricing or specs would have been great, and they just didn't do it. Even if, I want to be explicitly clear here, this is still a really awesome truck that I still intend to buy. So I'm not saying, you know, this is not a zero-sum game here, but I do think it was disappointing overall. I think it's the double whammy of the prices being much higher than we thought, even with inflation and supply chain, but the the double whammy of prices being much higher than we expected and the tri-motor in particular, the beast's range 
being so far off from what was from the figure given in 2019. It's tough. That's that's a tough combo right there. And so, uh, I, I again, I, I I love Tesla, but this is. I know they didn't do it on purpose or maliciously here. They weren't trying to do it this way, but. This, I think this disappointment that I'm feeling and I'm seeing echoed by many others in the community is really of Tesla's own making here. And I'm not talking about the choices they made on the truck. They were going to make those choices. Like, I'm not saying, well, they should have put in a 500 mile battery, you know, cost be darned. I'm not, I'm saying the reason I say it's of their own making is because if Tesla had unveiled the Cybertruck in 2019 and just said, it's coming, here's what it can do, but if they'd just not given specs or prices, I think it the sentiment would really be very different right now. You know, we yes, we would be comparing the, the price and specs that we got this week We'd be comparing it to the Lightning. We'd be comparing it to the Rivian R1T. We'd be comparing it even maybe to the Hummer EV, even though that's kind of its own animal, its own beast as well. But the the numbers that we got this week, meaning the specs and the price, the numbers we got this week are being judged against the numbers Tesla themselves gave us back in 2019. So... Uh, sure, a $100,000 beast would still be expensive in a vacuum if they'd never given any numbers back in 2019. But I think the range let down that I think if you if you will, if you'll at least my opinion let down on the tri-motor range certainly would not be as pronounced as it is today. And maybe it wouldn't have even have happened at all because, you know, 320, okay, well, that's kind of in line with the three, with the Y, with the X. And so to make this a little more constructive, my hope for Tesla, and I'm sure they don't need my notes on this. They've, they've, (laughs) they've got their own, they're smart people, but my hope for Tesla and by extension, my hope for all of us who love these cars and they love, and we love what this company is doing My hope is for Tesla to not give price or specs at a reveal event ever again. I think we'd all be better off for it. Now, the Generation 3 car that might, you know, is coming up sometime in the not too distant time horizon. We know that's a that's a big focus for Tesla. They might feel like they have to give price for that because kind of the whole point of that car is the price, right? But what they shouldn't do is give any specs at all. Don't give a range. Don't give any performance specs, even though that car absolutely won't be about performance at all. But if they, I just, I I think the fewer numbers that they give at the reveal events, the better. Show the cars, tell us what they can do, get us excited about the things that they can do, but leave those key critical details until they're absolutely locked in closer to production. And I, again, I think we'll all be better off for that. Now, don't get me wrong. Tesla, for for everything I'm saying here, I fully recognize that Tesla will still sell every single Cybertruck that they can make for the next year and beyond. And I also recognize that the prices will come down. So I think a lot of you, a lot of us that, that want to continue, because again, a lot, plenty of you voted in the poll saying that you're priced out. And I understand that. I completely understand that. For those of us that are going to stay in, I think, I think we're going to, you, you know, you, you might have a good chance of getting your Cybertruck sooner than you expected because these prices are so much higher that I think Tesla's going to sell as many of the Cybertrucks that they can make, especially at these prices, and then as as production volume ramps up and their costs go down, they can can 
play with those dials, right? They can, they'll be able to lower the prices while maintaining their profit margins. And thus more people will want the truck as it gets cheaper. And hopefully as its range goes up over time as well, particularly on, uh, on the all wheel drive and, and on the beast. So, I mean, and, and, and history tells us this, that this will happen unquestionably. Look at the S, look at the X, look at the three, look at the Y. Now, the uh, those cars had some ups to go with their downs in the pricing department. It wasn't just a straight trajectory down. Of course, that was all caused by the COVID, you know, the supply chain stuff. But you still, you look over, over time, over a larger time horizon on any of the four other Teslas, They've all come down. In fact, all four of them right now are cheaper than they have ever been. All four, S, X, 3, and Y, are all as cheap as they've ever been, despite inflation, despite you know all this other, whatever else is going on now in the world. So the Cybertruck will come down in price. But for the moment, it is, uh, it is the price is a, is a tough pill to swallow, along with, these ranges, uh, particularly that tri-motor range as well. Because again, I'm I'm totally happy on the dual motor, the all-wheel drive range. 340 is nice, but boy. we I think we'll, you know, the range extender, I can't wait to hear your thoughts about that. So yeah, I think I'm definitely going to make that the subject of next week's, or I guess I should say it now, this week's Patreon poll. This week as you hear this. All right, uh, I'm still not done, even if you are you might be sick of me by now. Of course, you can always pause or press stop and walk away, but I've got a few more notes here that I wanted to go over. So first, in my miscellaneous potpourri category, was that the stock price, Tesla stock, predictably was down after hours while the event was taking place. It was down about five bucks after hours, so really not too much. And then when the market opened the next day, which was Friday, today as I record this, it only ended up down a buck 25 from where it closed the day before. So again, you can kind of forget about the after hours price effects. It, it, it was only down a buck 25 between Thursday, the end of Thursday and the end of Friday. So pretty flat, really, which, which is interesting. Also, a number of you, in fact, all of you who have a Cybertruck reservation already know about this, but I'll just cover it real quick. Tesla is looking to help, well, they want to get you Cybertruck line waiters into a Tesla today so that they can start, you know, they can sell more cars while you're waiting. They sent out this email, which said, Cybertruck is here and your reservation is in the queue. While you await delivery of your Cybertruck, get $1,000 off the lease or purchase price of a new Tesla. Place your order by December 31st, 2023 to qualify. So at least you don't have to take delivery by December 31st because you basically, you'd have to order like right now in order to, in order to take delivery by the 31st. So place your order by the 31st. So I guess this isn't all about Q4 numbers. They'll, they'll take some some goosing of the Q1 figures as well. And hey, I'll say this. I mean, a thousand bucks off isn't bad, particularly if you're buying a Model 3, a base Model 3, especially, since those already have some good discounts on them as they're inevitably clearing out the existing Model 3s to make way for the Highlands, which are probably arriving in the US in Q1. So uh, I suspect if you do go ahead and take advantage of this deal, all you've got to do is just make sure that you're ordering from the same account that has your Cybertruck reservation on it and you'll get that thousand bucks off. Um, and then, oh, I, I did want to shout out the three really excellent early access hands-on impressions slash review, if I would use review in air quotes, but the three automotive journalists on YouTube that were given early access to the Cybertruck, whose videos went up this past Friday, today as I record this. So uh, the aforementioned MKBHD, Marquez Brownlee, his video was great, 40 minutes long, he covered a lot of stuff. And I have to say on a, on a 
as a professional, as a, as a degree holding journalist who works in an enthusiast media by day at IGN, I has I, I wouldn't necessarily call myself a quote unquote real journalist, but I, I will say I did appreciate that Marquez specifically didn't like in the review he talks about the in the in the video he talks about that he doesn't call it a review because he didn't have a chance to tow anything with it. He didn't have a chance to haul any payload with it, and he didn't have a chance to live with it. But his first impressions video is very thorough. It's really great. I encourage you to head on over to his channel and check that out. Top Gear, their video was also great. I really liked that they did some man on the street stuff where they actually, they had the, they had the car in Southern California and they just stopped and did some man on the street interviews with people to get their opinion on the, the Cybertruck, the look of it, obviously. And they had a wonderful interview with Franz and Lars in theirs as well. So that was great. But I think my favorite of the three, and this is no disrespect to the other two because all three really were fantastic and they're all different enough that make I, make all three worth watching and I've I've watched all three. But Haggerty's video, the Icons episode of Haggerty, it's it, Icons is their video series featuring the unparalleled automotive journalist Jason Camisa. Again, I, I don't I hope I'm getting Jason's last name pronounced correctly. In the video, so that the title of the video and the thumbnail is about drag racing the Cybertruck against the Rivian R1T and the Hummer EV. But the 28 minute video goes so, so far beyond that. Like it's, this video is tremendous. Jason just has, he admits that he, he was a skeptic. He just based on the looks of the Cybertruck, he was a skeptic, but he explains in thorough detail after experiencing the Cybertruck for himself, something that all of us haven't gotten to do yet, he explains how, as he drove it and spent three days with it, that he was won over by the Cybertruck's engineering advancements. Uh, a DeLorean does make a cameo appearance, which I did appreciate, and no, that's not why it's my favorite of the three, although it doesn't hurt. But the production value, actually the production value on all three of them was top notch. But yeah, I, I strongly encourage you to check out all three of those. So provided that I don't forget when I finish recording this episode, which I do admit forgetting to do this is going to be a reasonable possibility because I'm usually exhausted at the end of a, at the end of a recording. But I will do my best to remember to put links to all three videos in the description of this week's episode. All right, that is it for the Cybertruck event, but there's still a little more Ride the Lightning for you. I've got a pro tip of the week and a little bit more, so stick around right after this. Hi, this is Franz von Holzhausen, and you're listening to Ride the Lightning with Ryan McCaffrey, the Tesla unofficial podcast. Welcome back. Well, obviously, I have taken so much time here. There is no time for the Ride the Lightning hotline, but... I expect you've got thoughts on everything that happened with the Cybertruck this week. So if you do, and if you'd like to share them with me and your fellow listeners, call in for a chance to be featured on an upcoming episode of Ride the Lightning. Please try to keep your call to 90 seconds or less so that I can get to as many people each week as possible. And there are two easy ways that you can call in. Either use your smartphone's built-in voice recording software, record your question, and then email it my way. My email address is teslapodcast at gmail.com or you can take that same 90 second or less question and just call in anytime day or night and leave a message on the ride the lightning hotline the toll-free number to call is 1-888-989-8752 again that's 1-888-989-TSLA all right with that uh, I will say I had a great trip overall to Austin. I want to say uh, another little thank you, not just to Andy Sly for the plus one, but to Ryan and the team from the Kilowatts for kindly 
offering me a ride from the airport to my hotel when I arrived. Ryan spotted me near baggage claim, and he was like, Ryan, Ryan. And so he was very nice and let me, uh, their their Airbnb was right around the corner from the hotel I was staying at, so they were very nice to let me carpool with them and jump in and uh, grab a ride, so I'm grateful for that. Hey, an entertainment recommendation for you. I started watching this on my vacation, uh, my trip over the break, the holiday Thanksgiving break, and I got in a couple more episodes on my way out to Austin. And the show is Succession on HBO. Or I guess it's on Max now, right? So I know it's over. It was four seasons and it had it's all done now. It ended earlier this year. I'm finally watching it for the first time after having it recommended over and over. And its reputation uh, is out, outstanding and it is living up to that so far. Certainly not a family-friendly show, but... Uh, really good. If you've like me, if you have not watched that show, I, I definitely can recommend it for the adults in the household. How about a pro tip of the week for you? This one comes from John from the Tesla Owners Club of Pennsylvania. Hi, Ryan. This is John calling with the Tesla Owners Club of Pennsylvania. Our club is focused on owner education. I want to let you and your listeners know that we offer two-part free classes for Tesla new owners. We go into a deep dive into everything a new Tesla owner should know about their vehicle. We also have other classes focused on road tripping, full self-driving, and winter boot camp. Everyone can check that out at tocpa.club and look under the events link. John, thank you very much for that. I suspect you might not be the only club doing this. In fact, I hope you're not. But even if you are, this is fantastic. And in my humble opinion, it's exactly the kind of thing that the owners clubs should be doing for the community. Because as we all know, switching from a traditional internal combustion engine car to a Tesla, it's a big switch and there's a lot of new information to absorb. So I think it's great that fellow owners like yourself are doing this service for each other. We need Tesla themselves to amplify this kind of stuff for new owners at delivery to help make people aware that what you're doing exists. And maybe that's already going on, but if it's not, this is me calling out for it. Thank you, John, for that excellent pro tip of the week. If anybody else has a good pro tip of the week that you'd like to share with me and your fellow Tesla owners and enthusiasts, you can send it in the same way that you send in the regular Ride the Lightning hotline calls, which I gave you the instructions for just a couple of moments ago. All right. It has been a very long episode, but um, a very action-packed one. I have to say, I didn't anticipate this episode going this way. I did not anticipate expressing disappointment and and some, you know, b- and being completely priced out of the version that I was of the Cybertruck that I was hoping for. But that's the game, right? That's the, you know, I do this podcast and a roll with the punches and we, we uh, see how things go and we'll see how Tesla evolves and, and uh, you know, tweaks things over time. But in the meantime, there's a ton of us that are still really looking forward to getting a Cybertruck. So production has begun. We'll see how long they're doing Founder Series, whether that's already done, if the group that they delivered uh, this past week was the, the extent of the Founder Series, f- excuse me, Foundation Series, trucks and now they will move on to general production but hopefully a bunch of you out there in the audience start getting your invitation to configure and order and purchase and take delivery of your cyber truck very soon before i go let me mention some friends of the podcast that can hopefully be of use to you sooner or later i'll start with abstractocean.com head on over Again, to abstractocean.com. They've got all kinds of great Tesla accessories. I'm sure before too long, they'll have Cybertruck accessories as well. But S3XY, they've got you covered, whether it's the tempered glass custom fit screen protectors that are made in the Corning, the Gorilla Glass that Corning uses. Uh, That's part of the package. And it's just, it's a great piece of, of material that they've put together. It's the fourth generation version of that glass screen protector. But they've also got all kinds of great lighting kits and all sorts of other excellent Tesla accessories. So check them out, abstractocean.com. Use the coupon code RTLPODCAST at checkout to get 15% off of your first order. Again, that's RTLPODCAST, all one word, no spaces. 
the Snap Plate and the new Snap Plate Plus are available for, I can't say all four Teslas anymore. It's four of the five Teslas. We'll see if they come up with something at the, at the folks at Snap Plate come up with something for the Cybertruck. But I have to just say for the S3, X, and Y, the sexy lineup, uh, they've got the Snap Plate and the Snap Plate Plus. Get yours at everyamp.com slash RTL. And there's now a discount for you. Use the coupon code RTL as well. And that is, of course, the front license plate bracket that is a really nice, clean, minimalist design that leaves no unsightly hardware behind if you ever choose to remove it. And whether that's like a permanent removal or just when you're detailing the car or going to take it to a Cars and Coffee or taking it through a car wash or something, you want to take it off, you, it's, it'll come off easily. But when it's on, it's on there securely. So get your Snap Plate or the even stronger Snap Plate Plus from everyamp.com slash RTL. And don't forget the coupon code RTL. Budgetsafesolar.com. Keep them on your list if you're shopping for solar panels for your home or business or both. I had a good experience with Budget Safe Solar myself. We've got a nice system on our roof now. Uh, we're coming up on that one year mark. We're, gosh, like just about two months away. So we're 10 months into it. Been very happy so far. You know, energy costs, at least up here in the, the San Francisco Bay Area, PG&E, our main utility provider, the rates just kept going up and up. And we, my wife and I were all too happy to, you know what, to go, you know what, forget this. I mean, the renewable part's the best part, but just to just to say uh, buzz off to the utility company that kept raising and raising the rates every, what felt like twice a year, but at least every year. Anyway, um, solar's great. It's renewable. You can power your Tesla on sunshine. Go to budgetsafesolar.com to learn more. And if you do choose to proceed with a solar installation, please use the referral code RTL. If you are in or going to be in the greater San Francisco Bay Area and would like to treat your car to some detailing work, I heartily recommend Immaculate Reflections. Go to irdetailing.com to learn more and to get in touch with Jeff, the owner and master detailer at Immaculate Reflections. Maybe you want to do ceramic coating so that you don't have to wax the car for the next three to five years. Maybe you want to do paint correction get that finish looking as good as it possibly can. Maybe you want to get that paint protection film on some or all of the car. All of these things will not be, I guess I should more properly phrase that. None of these things will be necessary in any way, shape or form on the Cybertruck, making the Cybertruck perhaps, as I've said before, a, a professional detailer's worst nightmare. But uh, if you've got an SX3 or Y or some other car with paint on it that you care about, you can, uh, you can do no wrong by taking it to Immaculate Reflections. Again, irdetailing.com. Mention in your correspondence with Jeff that you're a Ride the Lightning listener and there's a nice little discount waiting for you. PureTesla.com slash RTL is your one-stop shop for your dash cam and sentry mode needs. They sell the micro SD-based solutions that I'm a big fan of because that memory format, micro SD, is more equipped to handle the constant reading and writing that the dash cam and sentry mode do, much more so than the standard USB flash memory. So head on over to puretesla.com slash RTL. It's 49 bucks for the 128 gigabyte kit or $69 for the 256 gigabyte kit. Both come fully formatted for the Tesla cam, ready to go, plug and play straight out of the package into your car, works with Mac or PC. And while they will ship anywhere worldwide, there's free shipping anywhere in the continental US. So that's cool. Take advantage of that. Finally, my Patreon page, as I mentioned at the top, a lot of hard work and a lot of time week after week for the last eight years plus goes into this podcast. And my hope is, th is that at some point, and maybe this is the week, maybe you heard this, I don't even know how long this episode's going to turn out to be because I'm recording like a little, this segment of it here. So I'm not sure. I think I'm well over an hour and a half at this point. But anyway, maybe this is the one where you thought, you know what, Ryan, thank you. You did a great job breaking down all the Cybertruck information. I mean, I hope I did. I did my best. But if, if you thought that and you've been listening for a while, 
I would be humbled and grateful if you would go over to my Patreon page found at patreon.com slash Tesla podcast and consider making a monthly pledge. Those monthly pledges start at just five bucks a month. And for that $5 a month, you will not only get what I hope is a satisfaction for backing me out of the goodness of your heart, but also uh, you will get early access to each week's show. If you step up to that ludicrous tier, the name I have for the $10 per month tier, that will get you the early access each week and that weekly lightning round bonus mini episode that I always tell you the topic of near the beginning of each show. So uh, there, And then the other, the other pledge tiers go on up from there and all the perks stack. So the higher, the more generous you are, the more ways I try to say thank you. So if you get a chance, head on over patreon.com slash Tesla podcast, Patreon spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. The uh, referral code, if you need one, hopefully you've got a friend, family member, coworker, but if you just need one, you're going to order a Tesla, uh, go ahead and punch in mine. So into a web browser, type ts.la slash Ryan73014, hit enter or return, whatever your preference of nomenclature there is, and that will take you to the Tesla design studio where you choose which Tesla you'd like to buy. You configure it, you order it, and it will have the referral bonuses baked in, which are, you know, they're they're varying from time to time, but currently you've got that uh, that nice little discount and the, what, the six... Six free months of free supercharging, I believe, is where we're, where we stand as of today. Follow me on Twitter and or Instagram, if you like. My handle is the same on both, DMC underscore Ryan. Some of this, I need to upload more Cybertruck. I've been so busy ever since the day of the event and then getting back and getting the podcast ready. But I will do my best to get more pictures and videos uploaded to my Instagram in, in particular uh, here very quickly. Pictures and videos from... Giga Texas and the Cybertruck event. And a reminder, you can email me anytime as well if you like, teslapodcast at gmail.com. Before I go, I want to say hello and thank you to the very generous upper tier backers of the Patreon, the plaid, the grandfathered in plaid tier, the maximum plaid tier, which by the way, uh, for maximum plaid and roadster in space tier, Tomorrow, as I record this, so it'll be it'll be yesterday for a lot of you, or, or earlier, you know, the other day. But we have our monthly Patreon Zoom hangout, which the the maximum plaid and higher folks get invited to that every month. And anyone that makes a new pledge or upgrades an existing pledge gets a one time thank you invite to whatever the next monthly Zoom hangout is. And so tomorrow. I anticipate we are going to have... I can't wait, honestly. I really want to talk to to all of you to get your takes, get your opinions on all the Cybertruck information and see see what you think of it. So, am I, I mean, if I'm a man on an island out here with my opinions on this one or or not, uh, I'm, I'm really eager to talk to everybody. I think it's going to be a very lively, fun discussion on the Zoom Hangout tomorrow. And if you do, if you are eligible for that, but you miss it, I do always post the MP3 audio recording of it immediately after. So you should, you should be getting uh, Patreon email notifications about that. Anyway, thank you first to the grandfathered in plaid level supporters. They are George Cassiopo, David Brander, Logan Willis, Peter Chalet, Eric Randolph, Dory and Steve Guberman, the Tesla owners of Taiwan, Ron Lee, Charlie Gillespie, David Perella, Dennis Peake, Jeff Angwin, Chase Cabanillas, the Lydia family, Aaron Altschul, Jared Brown, Jerome Strack, Jamie Dalton, the Tesla owners East Bay Club, Mike and Barbara from Louisville, David J. Howes, Matt Nixon, the Tesla owners club of Wisconsin, Ish, not Elon Musk, Peter and the Bear Boys of Colorado. Next, a big thanks to the Maximum Plaid backers. They are Jonathan Wales, Cameron Clark, Daniel Grummer, Seth Capello, Nick and Tony, the Galpin family, Ryan from New York City, Darren Nickel, Kaz Barnes, Brett Libano, Patrick Wisneski, Gil Cabrera, Watley, Mark Eversole, Todd Badger, Joe Edgel, 
Kevin Yank, the Tesla Owners Club of San Joaquin Valley. Great to see Joe, who heads, heads that club up out at the event. Michael Williams, Will Stedman, Derek Nessel wrote, Justin Perez, Jeremy Harris, Chris Beach, Tom Mills, Corey O'Donnell, Aaron, John Cody, Joel Sapp, Paul Casarino, Richard Corley, Chris Osborne, KB, Ken Epstein, Doug Carey, James Gregory, Adam Lavoy, contact one call center.com, Jason Chalukas, Travis Krenzel, Bruce Otterstein, Tom Behan, Josh Pennington, Matt Kalen, John from Cream Ridge, New Jersey, Sean Tisdale, Dustin Hart, and Michael Gallo. And finally, an extra big thanks goes out to the Roadster in Space tier backers who are Pete White, Lyle Austin, Steve Radspinner, Fernando Cordero, Lawton from Chicago, Sean Neidig, Neil Weaver, Jackson Wallace, Rolf and Jennifer Evers, Howard Anthony Smith, Victoria Aya Cavetto, Tesla Hitchhiker 42, Kara Weston, Robert from near Philly, and Kristen Rumble. Well, again, huge thanks to all of you. If you've hung in this long, thank you so much. I know this has been an exceptionally long episode of the podcast, and I value your time greatly, but I hope, uh, again, you'll forgive me this week. There was so much to get through. Uh, Hopefully you were as excited to listen to this podcast this week as I was to put it together and to make it, to record it. I had a blast. I won't linger too long here at the end because I've already talked a very long time. But thank you all so, so much for your time, your attention, and just for listening. And it means a lot that you'd spend your time with me uh, once a week here. So happy electric motoring, my friends, and I will see you next week. I mean, I think a Tesla is the most fun thing you could possibly buy ever. That's what it's meant to be. Our goal is to make... It's it's not exactly a car. It's actually a thing to maximize enjoyment. It's maximum fun.